Good morning. How's the family this morning? It's good having you all here. Man, the music was good. Thank you, Nick. Let's give the band another hand. Golly. Good stuff. You know, uh, many of you could be somewhere else today with uh, July the 4th weekend. I know a lot of people go to the lakes, they cook out, they have big events at their homes and just enjoy the weekend for that. And, you know, that's okay. As long as we don't lose sight of what July the 4th is about. You know, our country is under attack. And it's not only under attack from outside the country, it's under a major attack right here in our own country by our own people. I think that maybe some of the moral issues in our country have gone south and they need a little bit of work in that area. You know, the moral erosion uh, continues in America, on and on. A Christian survey revealed that 74% of Americans would steal from those who wouldn't miss it. 64% would lie for convenience as long as no one got hurt. 93% say they alone decide moral issues based on life experiences in their lives. 84% would break the rules of their own religion. The sad part is only 30% say that they would be willing to die for their religion, their religion beliefs, or for God. Only 30%. In today's society, less Americans are willing to take a stand for this country and have their voice heard. All out of fear. Seems it's too risky because we might upset the apple cart or bring harm to ourselves and our family or somebody might look down on us because we're not politically correct. If you're here to hear me be politically correct, you're in the wrong place. I don't follow those rules. I want to be godly correct in everything I do. And you should too. You know, there were 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence, and many of them lost everything, including their homes, their businesses, their family, and their lives because of the pursuit of freedom for this country. On July the 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was approved and adopted by the Second Continental Congress. I'm going to give you a history lesson this morning. You may need it, you may not, but we're going to go a little bit through this. If you know your history, you will know that our nation was first settled by people who came to this land looking to express their religious faith. They were trying to get away from something. They were trying to find something. They were looking for the freedom to worship as they please. And you're all probably familiar with the pilgrims. I know this is not Thanksgiving. But the pilgrims came here to Plymouth Rock on the Mayflower. And right after they landed, in 1620, they joined together in what was called the Mayflower Compact. You know, I asked my granddaughter, I said, do you know anything about, about the American history? And she said, well, they're not teaching us that yet. She really doesn't know anything about the Declaration of Independence yet because she hadn't been taught it in school. When I was in school, or before I was in school, I knew all about it because our country was entirely different. My parents, my grandparents, and everybody, they wanted to make sure that you knew what our independence was about and what the Declaration of Independence gave us. Nowadays, it seems like that's not the most important values in our lives anymore and not really that important to our kids as it should be taught. In the Mayflower Compact, the words were, In the name of God, Amen have an undertaking for the glory of God and for the advancement of the Christian faith, do solemnly and mutually in the presence of God covenant and combine ourselves together. The Mayfair Compact. And it, and it came back. Those settlers wrote this. We came here for the glory of God and for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter what the world tells you, no matter what people tell you, the truth is... America was, America was founded by men and women who acknowledged God's supreme rule over our lives. 
Everybody says, no, that's not what America's about. Without God, there'd be no America. So we do have a lot of, we do have a lot of things to consider. We can listen to what the world tells us and follow their lead. We can sit back and not defend our country anymore because somebody might not like us or somebody might not like what we said. Or we can stand on the truth of God and the truth of this country in the way it was found. Setting back and being quiet doesn't gain anything. In this past election, standing up with the religious convictions changed some of the course of America's headed right now. Is it, is it better? I think so. Is it going to get better? I think so. It all comes down to one thing. is We've got to enforce that God stays in our government. Because that's what's lacking right now. Is The way this country was founded, the, our government has lost sight of that. They're afraid they're going to offend somebody if they speak of God. So it's gotten tougher but it's gotten tougher for us at times too because we're no no longer allowed to pray or bow our heads or do things. We took prayer out of school. We're taking taking all the ornaments and all the decorations at Christmas off of our our, uh, courthouse lawns. And everybody goes, if you read the people that are against, they're saying, well, that's not right. It shouldn't be that way. They don't need to force their religion on us that we have anything to do with that. And there's one protest and one lawsuit after another. But these people were looking for God's righteousness to exalt this nation. They came here looking for that. The most familiar statement in the Declaration of Independence, many of you may know it, says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights that among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They didn't say happiness. They said the pursuit of happiness. Now, there's a difference. They said this because the founders were very wise, very wise men, because they referred to God's Word in each action and everything they did. They acknowledged that these rights, life, liberty, and pursuing happiness, came from God, not from the government. It does not come from government, but it comes from God. Remember that. Remember, if you're looking for happiness, you're not going to find it in man. You're not going to find it in the government. You're going to find it in God above. Amen? That's why they said this on the next line. The very next line. That to secure or to protect these rights, governments are instituted among men. They were saying to all, we want to form a government whose job is to protect and to guard what the Creator has given each one of us. Amen. Protect what God has given each one of us. Many of you may have heard and you've read it, I'm sure, that the story of the First Continental Congress, when they were discussing and debating about how the Declaration of Independence would be written, finally, after much time, over and over again, Ben Franklin stood and said, Gentlemen, if it is true that not one single petal from a flower falls to the ground without escaping God's attention, will the distress of this nation go unheeded? Let us therefore determine to seek His face. At that suggestion, right there, at that suggestion, 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence all went to their knees. As one man, one man began to pray and seek the wisdom of God. Now that's powerful. That gives me chills when you think about that. Can you see that many people in our Congress today on their knees? No. Because that's not important anymore. It's important to please everyone else and make sure you get to votes. That's what's important. It's not important what God wants of us and what God expects of our country. Here are some statements of spiritual commitment made by some of our founding fathers. John Quincy Adams, who became our sixth president, said in 1821 that from the time of the Declaration of Independence, the American people were bound by the laws of God 
and the laws of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which they all acknowledge as the root of their conduct. We all came together to obey the Word of God. John Quincy Adams, our first president, George Washington, said in his farewell address to the nation, do not let anyone claim tribute of American patriotism if they even attempt to remove religion from politics. How could our government not read that right there? Talking about removing religion from politics. Some of you may be on the fence there. You may think that politics has no business in government. I'm sorry, that God has no business in politics. God has everything to do with politics. He created this world. He created this United States, and He created us to be here. And He created leaders to do the right thing and seek His will in everything they did. Thomas Jefferson, our country's third president, stated, The First Amendment has created a wall of separation between church and state. And everybody jumps on this bandwagon immediately that there should be a separation between church and state. But he said, that wall is one directional wall. It keeps the government from running the church, but it makes sure that Christian principles will always stay in governments. Tell me who's got it wrong. Tell me that the world, you believe what they say. Right here, our early presidents and our founding fathers are telling us that we need God in our government and we need God in our lives and we need God controlling everything, not be controlled by man. The First Amendment is not about keeping God out of government, but it's about keeping government out of our ability to worship God freely. Amen? The righteousness of our government is even patterned, patterned after biblical principles. The righteousness, now think about that. The righteousness of our government is patterned after biblical principles. And when I read that, I thought, now how can they possibly tie that together that the principles that were founded upon came from the Bible? This is where the framers of our nation got the idea of the three branches of government, right here. We have the executive branch, the legislative branch, that makes laws, and the judicial branch. Most of you are familiar with that if you're familiar with your history. So please turn with me this morning. We're going to Isaiah chapter 33, beginning at verse 22. Isaiah chapter 33, beginning at verse 22. This scripture refers to God in those same three aspects of our government. It says, For the Lord is our judge. That's our judicial. The Lord is our lawgiver. That's our legislative. And the Lord is our king. That's our executive. And it is he who will save us. They base their principles off these three things right out of the Bible. Why is it that we so much hate, maybe not here, but we hate the fact that politi- that religion or God has been part of our government and is still trying with churches, trying to get religion back in our government, get God back in, get God back in our schools, get God back in our lives. Why is it so many churches, so many Religious leaders are trying to get that done because this country was founded on God and God's Word and God's principles. So why not get it back to where it was? You know, we hear about the good old days all the time. And you talk to some guys that had it hard in those good old days, they'll tell you those days weren't all that good. Things have improved. Machinery, economy, everything improved over the years. The worst thing that's happened in our country is called multimedia, internet service. Worst thing that's happened that I can see since I was born that has happened 
is because of the Internet service. Now, let me ask you this. You say, now, wait a minute. It's great. It helps us do this. We can do this. We can do this. You're exactly right. It has helped, but it's caused more damage than it has harm. I mean, than it has good. It's caused a lot of harm. Because it seems like everybody's got an opinion, and they all want to share it on Facebook or on the Internet. Especially people that don't have a clue about what America's about. You know, I was talking to someone back here just a few minutes ago before church started. And if you ever go on and you, you read on the Internet and you read about stories that are going on around the world and you skip on down the bottom to the comments and you click on the comments, it will drive you nuts. And it will make you mad. And some of the stuff being said is so vicious and so crazy. But some people don't realize, since it is the Internet, you may not be talking to an American. You may be talking to somebody on the other side of the country that don't have a clue. All they want to do is make you mad. And what do we do? We get in those conversations. And we let Satan steal our joy. Don't do that. Understand what's going on there. You know, our opinion is our opinion. If you're right, you're right. If you can back it up with God's Word, you're right. If you can truly back up anything that you say with God's Word and don't twist it to fit what you're saying, you're right. Stay on your ground. Don't back up. The framers of our government at this time were seeking how they could best organize our government. And they looked for the Word of God for the wisdom needed, and for His righteousness. We struggle with this daily, I know. Because without God, and this is the most important part that we need to really grasp in our lives, no matter what anybody else says, without God, our country is headed for a disaster. We've seen it, so many changes. You know, I'm old school. I'm 61 years old. Isn't that right, dear? You remind me of that, yeah. <laughs> she reminds me of that every once in a while. I'm old school. I grew up where I actually remember the 50s. You know, where things were going on. You got over into the 60s. You got in the Vietnam War. You know, everything going on. And we kept seeing these things happening. And all you hear is your parents saying that the country's going to hell in a handbasket. Heard that over and over again when I was growing up. But you know, the country wasn't all that bad. Little hand basket, there you go. Wasn't all that bad. There were more morals in America. There were more people that sought God in America at that time. And there were more people that believed this country was founded on the principles of God and His Word. We're losing that. But you know why we're losing it? Because we don't... Step up to the plate. We're Christians. We all profess to be Christians here. So why aren't we educating everybody else on what God's got to give and what God's done for us? Amen? Each one of us. Each one of us. We're called to be disciples for Christ. It's up to us to put the word out. And it's not about us. You know, that's part of what's going on in today's society. It's all about me. We watched something just the other day, uh, the other night, on road rage. People just killing one another over road rage. I was amazed. And I sat there and thought about that. You know, I've gotten angry with people cutting me off and people trying to run you off the road and all kinds of stuff. I've gotten angry with that, but I never got mad enough I wanted to kill somebody over it. You know, that's getting a little bit out there. But you know what I thought? What is all this about? Is this somebody under stress? Is this... Is this a, somebody having a bad day? It could be. But I think overall what it comes down to, it's all about me. It's all about I'm in a hurry. I'm the one. They're in my way. It's all about me. I'm entitled. In America, that's what's going on a lot with a lot of people is they feel like they're growing up in this society now. They're entitled. They deserve it, even though they haven't done one thing for it. I have a hard time dealing with that. Once again, we go back to old school. Once again, here's Reg not being politically correct. 
I believe God would agree with me. These people, these signers of the Declaration of Independence, they deserved it and they earned it. Did they deserve to lose their life? No. But they weren't afraid to. To step up for their God and their religion, to be able to be free to worship in the way that they sought. I think we're going to lose that if we don't stay strong. We see more and more decline. It's what scares me about the cowboy and the cowboy culture. We see more decline there. More people looking at that culture that it's a that it's fading away. And it is. It's what I love about cowboy church. It's not all about the cowboy, but it is about that country culture. And we may not all be cowboys. No, I'm not. But I'm a country boy. I love this country. I thank God I was born in this country. And we should all. When you think things are really bad in this country, look at some of the others. I think that will be a wake-up call for you. And in fact, make you really appreciate what's around you. But you know, you need to thank God that you're here today. That you can sit in here and you can worship with the freedom knowing it's okay. We're not going to have someone come in here, storm in here, and try to stop it. Well, we might. Everybody duck, because I know their guns all in this church. Don't shoot this way, guys. We're different. God made us different. We worship in a different way. Some people think we're a cult. They do. God knows what we are. Jesus Christ is alive and well right here in this cowboy church as any other church across America. Amen? We still stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance with no problem. And we're not going to not do it because it might not be politically correct in church. We're going to do what God leads us to do. And we're doing that. And ever since we began doing that, the church is growing. And it's getting bigger. And I hope you're all excited. Because here in America, we are entitled, entitled by God, to worship freely. And He has set forth that we can increase and grow. When you walk out of here today, if you don't get anything else out of this but a history lesson... Remember, God created the history, not anyone else. This week, as we celebrate our country's freedom, I would ask that you, each individual, would take time to pray sincerely for the healing of this nation and our world together. And pray in remembrance of the ones who sacrificed and died for us to have that freedom. Above all, remember, and give thanks to our Almighty God who hears our prayers and will heal our land. Amen? Let's close by turning to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. The prayers, the prayers, earnest prayers of a righteous person can accomplish a lot. You may think that one little simple prayer that you might do today for this country is not effective, but it will be heard. And if we all continue to do that together, things can get better. It starts with us. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today, and Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence that's felt throughout this building each and every week. Father, I thank you for this family. This family that gets together every week. I thank you for this family reunion that we have right here in your house as we celebrate you. 
And Father, I thank you for the founding of this country and the blessings you provide throughout. Father, I pray today that our land would be healed, that our government would seek your will, your word, and your face in everything they do and the decisions that are being made. And Father, I pray that each and every one here today would pray in the same way. Father, that they would seek you in their lives to enrich their lives. And Father, that our morals stay strong based on your word. Father, we pray today for safety for everyone in these holiday times that travel and get out of their zones, Father, that you would protect them. And Father, as each one leaves here today, that you'd put that hedge of protection around them as they travel back. Father, we're so thankful. We're so blessed. We pray today that everything we said, everything we did, uplifting, pleasing, and glorifying to you. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.